What will your dismissive avoiding ex feel if you tell them you want them back? Is it a good idea to tell them that you want to try again? Or will it only push them further away? Or maybe you have told them already, but you haven't heard back and you want to know what it is they're feeling right now. In this video, we'll explore the inner world of the DA when they hear the words, I want you back and what their silence could signal. Hi, I'm Katya Morozova. I'm a trauma-informed personal and relationship coach, and I help people overcome heartbreak. I also help them become secure in their skin and in their relationships using attachment theory. If that sounds interesting to you, then definitely subscribe to my channel. I'm also the founder of katiamorozova.me, and if you want to book a coaching session, you can do so on that website. Before we dive in, I want to give a quick caveat. Please remember that attachment theory is just that. It is a theory. Attachment styles are not a diagnosis, and people are complex and a manifestation of their upbringing, their culture, their social ties, life experience, their temperament, their lineage, and the list goes on. And most importantly, their choices as adults matter. Um, and we need to give weight to those choices. Please don't use this video as a way to forecast someone's behavior as attachment theory is not a model for predicting an adult's behavior. Now let's get into what a person with a dismissive avoidant attachment style could feel if you told them you wanted them back. A dismissive avoidant will likely feel guarded as an initial reaction to you wanting to get back together. People with this attachment style easily orient to an I-centered mentality. They can easily reorganize their life to focus back on themselves and fill their life with things that create busyness or retreat into their creature comforts. And they'll enjoy doing these things and they won't struggle to be by themselves. In one of my other videos, I talk about how the DA likely feels relief as the first stage of a breakup. So relief is obviously a pleasant emotion. Um, so the idea of getting back together will likely bring back memories of you know, tension and conflict, especially at the end, which simply can't compete with the relief that they're feeling after the relationship ended. So that's something to consider that that is likely what a DA will feel if you tell them you want them back initially. Now, past the guardedness will likely be a fear of vulnerability or of rejection. This isn't going to be the case for all situations. This fear of vulnerability will likely only show up if they were really invested in your relationship and still are to some degree, or they have mixed feelings about the breakup. The idea of getting back into a we is vulnerable. The possibility of opening themselves up is vulnerable. The possibility of being hurt or disappointed is really vulnerable. This is especially true if it's linked to the DA's fear of dependence. So for instance, if the DA already experienced disappointment as a result of your relationship or was let down in the relationship, then the idea of depending again will probably be much more challenging the second time around. And these are all things that will likely be hidden from the view for the DA um, and in their unconscious. So if you tell them you want to get back together, then they'll likely maintain their distance while these concerns play out in the background without them really being connected to them on a conscious plane. The next common way that DAs typically feel about relationships and about getting back together is often overlooked. And often I find people really mistake this for cruelty, right? Like when a DA is cold, they'll mistake that what's actually going on with them is cruelty. Like they intentionally want to withhold information from you or withhold closure. And this is, uh, and this common way that a DA f uh, might actually feel is incredibly ambivalent at the possibility of getting back together. So for instance, if you take the reasons I already listed in this video, fear of vulnerability, guardedness, fear of dependency, fearing, uh, fear of being hurt or disappointed, you have all of these complex fears about the relationship. 
And on the other side of that, they may deeply want to connect, as I believe most people, really all people really want to connect. Um, and they want companionship, they want love and friendship. But if a person with this attachment style has yet to reconcile these conflicts within them, their fears and their desires, then they'll be in this perpetual state of ambivalence. And if you tell them you want them back, this can often explain their lackluster reaction, their hesitation, or this spotty half committal style communication. Now, of course, this doesn't necessarily excuse someone's silence or avoidance, as I think it's really important to learn to be uh, communicative with the people that we date and uh, to help uh, for both parties to help to create a sense of closure for, you know, each other when a relationship ends. Um, but I do think that it might be helpful for some people to consider that a lot of times a DA isn't necessarily being uh, cruel in their silence. It's just that they struggle with a severe degree of ambivalence about relationships. So doubt and trust issues may also surface for the dismissive avoidant ex at the prospect of getting back together. They may think to themselves upon hearing your wish to reconnect, well, what's going to change? And they may doubt when you try to quell their concerns, or they may keep those concerns to themselves and choose to stay silent, not giving you an answer out of a variety of fear, sometimes of simply out of being convinced. A lot of people try to uh, <laughs> convince sometimes a, a person with this attachment style how they should feel or how things are gonna work out. This is often common of uh, someone who's on a little bit more on the anxious side of the spectrum. So they'll stay silent, not giving you an answer, or they'll just be closed to the possibility of trying again. Uh, doubt and trust issues are actually a common way for uh, a DA to feel, especially if they decided that the relationship wasn't working and that's why the relationship ended. It really may not be because you outright broke their trust. They could simply mistrust the compatibility of your relationship. And likely asking for, for them back will bring this incompatibility, this mistrust of compatibility to the surface. Now let's talk about the cases where a DA is more open to reconnecting. The final possibility is that a DA may feel the need for reassurance or patience after you tell them you'd like to reconnect. They may not have an immediate answer. They may need time to consider. They may want evidence that things could be different between the two of you. They may want to spend time together without putting a label on the relationship. If patience for the DA was missing in the relationship, then likely to consider another relationship with you, they'll want to first see if you can give the space and patience that they need. This isn't true for all cases, so please consider that case-by-case -case context is very important for this last point, especially so that you don't spend all of your patience on someone who isn't actually thinking about exploring a relationship with you. Now, understanding the complexities of a dismissive avoidant ex's emotions and reactions when you express your desire to reconcile can be challenging. And if you're currently facing the situation and want personalized guidance on whether it's a good idea to tell your avoidant partner you want them back, as well as what their reaction might mean for the future of your relationship, I invite you to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session where I can provide you valuable insights and support tailored to your specific situation, dive deeper into the dynamics at play, and help you navigate this complex terrain with personalized next steps that will give you clarity and confidence. And of course, if I don't see a path forward for you and your partner, I will also be transparent with you about the reality of your relationship. From, again, from my objective stance, but also 
my opinion. And I can at that point happily explore personal growth and recovery opportunities on your path forward. So to get started, you can visit katiamorozova.me forward slash single dash session, or you can click on the link below in the comments or the description. Did you like this video? If you did, give me a like and subscribe for more content like this. Next up is my video on what this dismissive avoidant ex is thinking during no contact. So definitely check that out next. I hope uh, it's going to be right up here. I hope you really enjoy this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.